tuning in. Um, my name is Annika. I'm with Camp Student Radio. And today I'm going to be interviewing Grant Sugaski from um, Post Pedestrian. He has put out a lot of good music recently um, with two kind of shorter albums and two singles all within this year. So Grant, um, if you don't mind me asking, I guess that would be a good place to start. Um, yeah, you've been putting out some really good new music right now. Um, how's that been going for you? What's that been like? Um, and maybe like, how has the pandemic too impacted your creative process? Like what's going on with you there? Yeah, so um, I started putting out music under Post Pedestrian because the pandemic um, kind of slowed things down with, um, I was in a band called Fuzzy Socks back in Tucson um, and we were doing live shows and whatnot. And with the pandemic, everything kind of just shut down and um we stopped playing shows and then i had to leave to north carolina because my uh my partner is getting her phd out here so that's something you can't turn down so we came out here and um i once i finally got a big setup going and i took the time and invested in the right equipment um i just started recording all the stuff that i've been working on over the pand the beginning of the pandemic uh, just all at once. And uh, I still wor work a lot with um, the drummer uh, who goes under Pebble Napkins, another great band that everyone should check out. Um, and I still work with him a lot because he's a guru in the uh, with uh, sound and just making things sound really good. And um, we've just been grinding it out, putting it out. Um, the pandemic, though, the one thing is that now that I put out all this music, um it the pandemic really makes it hard to collaborate with other people and like get inspiration for music it's kind of just like you gotta sit at home and listen to records on your own and just try to get some kind of energy from it yeah no, i know that's like very real and understandable i feel like um have you liked the transition moving from tucson like you know you kind of touched a little bit on how maybe it's been harder for you to collaborate now um, with the pandemic and I'm assuming also with that transition, you know, moving away from kind of like the artists that you're more familiar with collaborating with. How's mm -hmm. that been? Like, have you been doing everything solo? How, how do you like that? How do you feel about that? Um, I've been doing most things solo. Um, I still try to keep in touch as much as I can with the Tucson music scene because it's unlike anything else in the rest of the country it's just so pure and there's so many creative minds in the tucson music scene that just outweigh every other place but uh, i've yet to because of the pandemic i've yet to acclimate to the durham environment i'm sure there's good music out here but you know there are no shows there are no um it, they take a little they're a little bit stricter about precautions here um as they should be uh, compared to Arizona. So yeah. <laughs> everything's pretty much shut down still. And so it makes it really hard to like go out and meet somebody and say, hey, you play bass or drums, let's get together sometime. Um, so that's been, a, yeah. that's been a challenge for sure. Yeah, no, that like makes a lot of sense. And hopefully, you know, especially if they're better about COVID and stuff where you're at than in Arizona. <laughs> Yeah. hopefully it gets a little bit better a little quicker there i don't know um because yeah. yeah honestly like uh i'm not from tucson but i i'm in tucson for school and stuff and yeah that was kind of my absolute favorite part of tucson before everything shut down was the music scene it's absolutely phenomenal there mm -hmm. um i guess kind of shifting gears until into the music you've released under the name post pedestrian um, it sounds like there's a fair amount of variety in sound in the stuff you've released. Um, you know, like the albums you put out sound cohesive in it of themselves, but then comparing it to some of your um, other releases, like, you know, there's some different stuff going on there, um, especially with your most recently released single giving off like pretty heavy 80s vibes. That was kind of cool. Yeah. Um, so like in general, like how would you describe the music you make? Um, I always try to describe it as like a, a punkish indie. Um, it's really hard to describe. I think like um, music raters and like stuff on websites would rate it as like a post-punk kind of deal. Um, yeah. But um, I, I try to go for that genre. My like 
favorite influences are like um an obscure band called uh the cleaners from venus which is an amazing deep cut that everybody should know about but nobody seems to know about um <laughs> they're they're an amazing band and they they have they encapsulate this genre that's like it doesn't quite fit into like, and they're from the 1980s. They're in 1981, 82 band, and they sound like Tame Impala now. It's, it's, they have this, yeah, it's like, imagine if like Kevin Parker started writing music when he was like 24 before he got, became a mastermind and um, <laughs> a studio. Um, yeah, it's like a very aggressive, but still um, has some mellow tones to it. And that's what I try to shoot for um, when I when I make music. Yeah, no, that's really cool. Um, honestly, haven't heard of them. So I think you're right, at least from my perspective, that they seem pretty underrated. But yeah, I'll definitely yeah. have to check them out. You said the cleaners from Venus, right? Yeah, the cleaners from Venus. It's a very obscure name, very <laughs> obscure band. But they have a couple singles that are just absolutely phenomenal. Yeah, no, I mean, they're going to be on my list for sure. So I'll like yeah. message you afterward to let you know what I think. <laughs> um, kind of going off of that too. So in addition to the cleaners from Venus, like, do you have any other major artistic influences that feed into your process? Even if it's like, not like, oh, I'm trying to make my music sound like this, like just anything that's influenced you in general? Yeah, um, there's a local Tucson band, um, Tonight Sunshine. Um, you may have heard of them. Yeah, we played a couple shows with them and they're the most beautiful people I've ever met in my entire life. And um, they make really, really fantastic music, but it's so genre bending um, that like it's definitely an inspiration for me. Um, like that and Paramore is like what I what I try Classic. to go for. Yeah, that like Haley Williams could just rule my world. But um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, me too. I feel that. Yeah. Tonight's Sunshine, though, uh, they make like really, really fun music. And like on on the first EP that I released, the Sunday Scaries EP, um, three of the songs I actually was performing in Tucson before with Fuzzy Socks before I moved out here. Um, we kind of did a thing where when the band kind of split up because we all moved away, um, we kind of divvied up our songs and re-recorded and re-released them. And so um, that, that, those, that EP was heavily influenced by um, that and Surf Curse. <laughs> nice. Yeah. yeah. No, that's like really cool. Honestly, I didn't know that about, you know, kind of where the origins of those songs were from um, on Sunday Scaries. It's really interesting to learn. Um, yeah. But yeah, Tonight's Sunshine, like crazy phenomenal. I like, um, I saw them live, I think a couple of times before stuff shut down. I saw them once at Subspace, love Subspace. You know, I'm sure you're very familiar. Um, Is that the studio downtown? It's like, it's that building. Yeah, I think it's in downtown. I honestly can't remember exactly where it is, but it's like you go, you enter the doors and then you kind of go into the basement, which oh, I think is like where they get no, the name yeah. subspace from. That's yeah. Nice. And so like, it's really cool because they have like a bunch of art stuff and, you know, whatnot, like down in that subspace basement. And then you like climb up these stairs on the other side of that basement room to come up like to the outside um kind wow. of out behind the building and then that's where usually artists will perform like yeah tonight sunshine did one time i just googled it and it looks like an amazing place uh yeah i was gonna say i we may have played there with them but it definitely not subspace oh yeah 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 i know that that was a cool venue that's where i saw them so like yeah i i've seen them live like the lead singer especially i think puts on a pretty good performance so that's like really cool that you've collaborated with them before yeah yeah um yeah no that's like all very neat i guess like kind of related to influences and stuff maybe digging a, a little far further back um how did you get into music in the first place like what's your musical origin story yeah when i was uh in fifth grade i started doing band like every every uh musician does they do band in elementary school and uh when i was in middle school i had a a teacher a band teacher by the name of miss seaman she's the most amazing person she's very local in casa grande tucson she does a lot of stuff uh music related and um 
she <laughs> this is probably not a, a good thing for me to say about her but she let me ditch class and hang out in the band room and uh just didn't tell on me and uh there was a band room a choir room and a auditorium and um the auditorium at a nine foot grand uh, nice steinway um and the choir room had a piano and a drum set and the band room had every instrument available and so when i was a kid i would just ditch class and i would go play a new instrument i learned like saxophone guitar piano drums um clarinet and uh i can't play brass instruments so that kind of was the limit but um <laughs> i got to like just spend time every day with um my best friend uh josh anderson who is an amazing musician and um we would just like try things out every single day and uh for about two years i did that so i got probably like four hours of practice every single day wow and, um and that's uh, crazy and, yeah I, I but i during high school i kind of took a break um to focus on sports like who who does that but uh, looking <laughs> back i kind of regret it but um uh I, in college is when i uh, i was in a um, academic fraternity at u of a called uh, theta ton engineering fraternity and uh, okay. it just so happened that um, three other people in the in the fraternity played instruments and uh, we would hang out and stuff. And that's what eventually became Fuzzy Socks. Um, oh, that's so cool. Yeah, we would just hang out in uh, my friends. He lived in a pool house and not even like a house, like the, the house in the backyard um of somebody oh my gosh house. really yeah he, he <laughs> lived in a pool house and we would just hang out by the pool in the pool house and like grill food and like play for hours a day and uh, wow. that's kind of how i i got into really really into music and that's when i started releasing stuff yeah that is so cool like also shout out your fifth grade teacher miss seaman like what <laughs> yeah. a g honestly it sounds like she really you know helped you lay the foundation for what yeah, you're doing she, now that's super really cool fostered it <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's like kind of funny because when you said that i was like wait a second there was a, a also a teacher at where i went to high school called mr seaman and like everyone would like laugh because haha seaman yeah. ha -ha, sex <laughs> yeah. joke so we i was like wait a second my middle school yeah for sure <laughs> <laughs> yeah i was like figured I'd throw that out there because I was just like I thought maybe there was a connection at first but yeah I'm like from the valley up in Phoenix so I'm probably uh, not maybe I don't know they they're all kind of related so maybe yeah I, I think they're like kind of a big family but yeah sorry kind of off topic I was just like oh interesting but no yeah that's super cool um and you know I mentioned kind of before we started recording this that I I was talking to one of your friends Alex Siegel who I'm also friends with and He's kind of yeah. like how I discovered your music um, mm -hmm. because he like posted on an Instagram story one time or something. He had yeah. a question for me to throw you. He's not like sure how into this you are, but like, what's your favorite piece of musical gear? Like, are you kind of a gearhead or not really? Um, I used to be super into gear and then I kind of had like an ego death where I was like, you know what, <laughs> gear is nothing like, you know, you could have all the gear in the world and you couldn't make anything. But um, it, it, so like, but I, I, I know Alex would ask me that question. Um, definitely <laughs> um, not necessarily gear because um, I, I don't really own much gear anymore. I kind of sold it all. Um, I, my favorite, my favorite piece of musical anything though, is I got a new jazz master, um, which I actually have right here. <sighs> this is my favorite piece of uh musical equipment and, oh wow and That's yeah so it's so pretty my, it's my first big boy guitar it's my first like non hundred dollar guitar <laughs> so that that's probably my favorite thing yeah that's really nice like i i just got my first electric guitar actually a couple of weeks ago i'm i'm a little bit further back in the process of music making maybe <laughs> definitely yeah. but no it was so exciting like getting an instrument you know that you finally enjoy playing because like just before that i just had like this i don't know if i can swear actually i just had this crappy acoustic guitar 
that I hated yeah. playing and so I just like never really got into it and then I don't know it was just like as soon as I got that guitar that I liked playing I like have calluses on my fingers now my fingertips yeah. are hardening I like can do bar chords like what crazy so yeah yeah that like it really the the instrument I feel like is the thing that really makes the difference like I never understood as a kid how like you'd look in the like guitar center magazine and you see guitars for like fourteen thousand dollars or something like that and you'd be like who spends the money on this <laughs> but after like buying a really nice guitar like after literally i had my hundred dollar starcaster for like 12 years before yeah. i before i got a new guitar and after playing that for 12 years and now playing this like all of a sudden I just got this wave of creativity because I'm just like, this sounds better. You know, it yeah. feels better. It, 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 I, I can move across it better. It's just better. Yeah, no, that's like a fantastic feeling, honestly. Yeah. I don't know, maybe, maybe hopefully I'll know what you're talking about when I can <laughs> grade myself. I'm currently working like, I love that electric guitar I got, you know, considering where I came from, but you know, it's just like a 100, $200 Yamaha, which that's, I'm yes. loving it right now. But yeah, that's like, a good instrument play, definitely can make a difference. I, I played every single show with that hundred dollar guitar and it, <laughs> it, it did well. So. <laughs> yeah, that's so funny though. Um, kind of guitars to bass now. I got another kind of related to the first question for you. Um, who's the best bass player you've played with? And I'm sure you can guess who wanted to know this. <laughs> oh, for sure. Alex, man. Um, <laughs> No, no, Alex is definitely like one of the more creative people I met. He's like just so energetic. Um he he's he's got some tough running though. We had an excellent bass player named uh Daniel Berger. He uh he used to live in Tucson. Wow, well, iconic person. last name right there, too. Yeah, Daniel Berger. Yeah, classic. Um and he, he uh he was a fantastic musician as well. We had a couple of excellent basses for Fuzzy Socks. Tell Alex, though, that he was good. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. I figured I'd throw that in there for him. Um, that's really funny. Um, I guess, like, kind of one of the last questions that I have, like, really on the script, um, if you could open for any artist, who would it be and why? Like, maybe you have a top three, you know? Yeah. Um, you know, honestly, if I could open for any artist, it would probably be Tonight Sunshine. No joke. Um, really that or annie jump cannon which is another tucson fan um yeah i we played a show with annie jump cannon and they rocked the entire house it was incredible um but tonight sunshine puts on probably one of the most amazing shows that i've ever seen like they like just put on a presentation that engages you in the music and then like all of a sudden they'll switch instruments and you're just mind blown and the vocals on the lead singer are just incredible and yeah um, yeah and the musicianship from isaiah the bassist diego uh the guitarist and cougar the drummer um they they kill it so i would i would want to open for them for sure um, I have opened for them and it's, it's a good feeling. <laughs> I would yeah, no, they, again. they definitely do put on a good performance and yeah, I think I almost saw Annie jump cannon too, but mm -hmm. I don't know, something came up. I didn't end up seeing them, but yeah, obviously, you know, another quite locally famous Tucson band. Um, yeah. that's super cool. Um, that's kind of all the questions I have on the script. Um, I guess like if there's anything else you want to talk about, we can just kind of like take it from here. Those are, you know, all the questions that I really had laid out. Um, I guess, is there anything else that's like been important to you, you and your music? Um, any other like, you know, like maybe messages that you feel are really prominent in your music, you know, just like cheesy yeah. stuff like that. Um, well, I think like, I think one of the main things is I would say to anybody who wants to make music is like that that's the main message in my music is like just just make it like um I have we have I have this group chat with all the members of my previous band and uh we just send ideas and stuff all the time and we always like catch ourselves in a lull 
And it's always the drummer, Kevin, who's like super down to earth, just so, so intelligent and calm. He's just always just like, just make it like, just record <laughs> it and just like be done with it. You know, like just, just, just make the music at the time that you're feeling it. And if you're not feeling it, then you don't have to make it, you know, like don't force yourself and especially don't like get frustrated with it because as soon as you start getting frustrated with it, like you start making bad music and <laughs> you know, you're not really, it's, you're not really feeling it. And I feel like that's the, like a lot of my songs talk about just like, um, like one of my songs specifically uh, live your life um, is just like, literally like we're all gonna die someday like you know you, my music is never gonna be as good as like Kevin Parker's from Tame Impala <laughs> I'm never gonna do that and the only person that can make that kind of music is him you know like I I have to make my own music and uh if I if I'm gonna set like a goal for perfection then like I'm never gonna make anything and so I feel like yeah just, like like especially like beginning musicians like people who like have creative thoughts but they're like oh i don't know how to play my instrument well enough like who cares you know <laughs> like just yeah. play what you can and like it'll probably sound good if you really care about it yeah no i honestly like completely agree i've just started getting into like making music myself i'm like in an intro music class right now so i have like awesome. my first ever song that i've made that's due next week and awesome. yeah, like I, that completely resonates with me. Cause like when I wrote the lyrics, I was just like really feeling it. And, you know, it was kind yeah. of like, I was like, Ooh, here's an idea. And it was like, it easy, it flowed. Um, but yeah, then after that, I was just like, okay, now let's make myself do this. Or I don't, uh, I just wasn't feeling it. And now I'm yeah. just, Ooh, I don't know. But yeah, I honestly like what you said makes a lot of sense. I feel like that's maybe why my lyrics came out pretty decent, but then the actual yeah. melody that I'm trying to put with it, yeah, not so much. But and that's the, that's the thing. Like, um, whenever you force it, like, I feel like when people think about like here, oh, this album took like four years to record. It's not like they were working on it every single day for four years. It's like they worked on it for like three hours one day and then they took a month break. And yeah. Then like, yeah. And like, I feel like that's like the best way to write music because like when you only play when you're feeling it, like you really make really awesome creative stuff. No, yeah, really. I feel like my personal experience too, you can't really force the creative <laughs> process very well and get the best results. So yeah, it's pretty neat. Um, like mentioning you know that one song on your album live your life um is that would that maybe be your favorite song that you've released under post pedestrian or what would you say is your favorite song if you can even choose yeah um i would say my favorite song is probably present happiness by uh, that's a good one that, yeah i wrote that about being in durham and like being like you know with with transition and moving across the country um with someone that like I've only been dating for three years like it's you know it's like a big transition and yeah. like there there's obviously in every relationship like that time where it's just like did we really mean to do this or like you know did we rush into this but like um I wrote that song about just like you know yeah I didn't mean to do it that's why I did it and like I, I definitely feel isolated in North Carolina but like I can make this my new home and like you know like yeah I have all these issues going on in my life but my present happiness is is okay like currently I am fine and that should be what I focus on yeah, yeah. I I really like connected with that song myself too I thought that was a great one because it's like yeah literally like especially right now given kind of the circumstances we've all been forced into like there's so many things that are negative going on that we can't really do anything about and so like especially with like future uncertainty too I feel like that's really ramped up a lot for a lot of people right now so yeah I the message just really resonated with me in that song of like hey yeah. do what you can with what you've got right now if you're chilling right now just enjoy that and you know yeah. don't don't maybe get too preoccupied if like oh did I make a mistake did I should I have done something else because like you know you're you're where you're at right now and that you know, that shouldn't yeah. be wasted, I guess. That's a good thing to enjoy. 
Yeah, and fun little side secret on that song. Um, if you listen to the song, um, oh, I forget the name of the song, but it's by Current Joys. Um, I that's why I named the song "Present Happiness." I thought, oh, Current Joys. Oh and, shoot, yeah. that's cool. Yeah, and I'll I'll have to figure out um the name of the song, but it's um here. I'm just gonna look it up right now because yeah no go for it that's like that's neat i see the um, connection i love little nuggets like that <laughs> yeah uh new flesh oh, okay if you listen to them very closely together they sound very similar and it's because i was listening to new flesh on repeat for probably like two weeks straight when i moved yeah. here i don't know why but it was just like my comfort song and um that I was like, you know, what? I really like the vibe of this song. I'm going to write a song like it. That's like just about, you know what? Who gives a crap? Like who cares about anything? Like just enjoy your life and make music. <laughs> yeah, no, that's like super cool. Um, I guess like going off of that, are there any other like little fun facts, like little nuggets that you can think of? Like for, you know, the people who are going to watch this, like, oh, here's some insider knowledge. If not, that's yeah. fine, but... <laughs> Well, honestly, I would just say um, if you want, if you're in the bass, you, everybody should listen to Bloom. Uh, it has probably the coolest bass line that was ever written for one of my songs. My friend Daniel Berger wrote it and uh, we, we literally just sat there and we would go note by note and be like, uh, 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 like, yeah, play the, uh, no. And like <laughs> literally like would just like sing it out as we were creating it. And um yeah, that's probably one of the coolest things to listen to. <laughs> yeah, like no, bass. <laughs> I love bass, like literally. Oh my gosh. I mean, cool guitar riffs are cool guitar riffs for sure. But, you know, when a song has like an interesting or funky or just like, you know, it's doing something with the bass line, like, I don't know. I feel like that's some of the some of my favorite music usually. Um, yeah. I guess would that song be the one that you've maybe like spent the most time working on or which song has been like, you know, the, the quickest, which one's been the longest to work on. Um, um, and does it really show when you listen to it or what do you think? Yeah. Um, I definitely think it shows how long you work on it uh, because the audio quality is that much better. Bloom. I've been where I have recordings on my phone from, I think April 18th, 2018 that when I first started writing it. Um, oh my. <laughs> yeah, it, that one took a long time to write. And um, it took a long time because like, we just kept going back to it and making it better and better and better and better and better. And like, uh, it had a lot of revisions. I think we had like 40, 50 something different versions of that song before we actually like released it. Um, and so that took a long time. I think the shortest, uh, I've ever worked on a song is um, I did it. I did two, the other two songs on um, live your life and present happiness. I recorded and probably total both of them total about seven, eight hours. Wow. Like, I wrote them, I recorded them and then like had them ready to release and probably like a total of eight hours. Uh, I, I was just really feeling those. And yeah. uh, but like the audio quality, if you were to listen to both, uh, like say Circles is probably the best audio quality that I've ever released. If you were to listen to like Present Happiness or Live Your Life, you'd be like, they didn't spend as much time. The song <laughs> sounds good, but they didn't spend as much time like making it sound good, like removing some of the like static and like making the, you know, the, the instruments blend better, you know, that... <laughs> I definitely didn't spend any time on that. <laughs> yeah. And honestly, like, that's okay. Like, low-key, sometimes I really enjoy, like, really low audio quality sounding songs. Yeah. Like, I don't know. There's just something charming about them, I feel like, sometimes that I'm just like, yeah. yes, lo give me that really ridiculous good. static. <laughs> yeah, lo-fi sounds really good for sure. I think, like, another maybe interesting fact is that um, – on my second EP, Relapse is a song that I rewrote and I originally recorded when I was 12 or 13. Um, if you were to go on SoundCloud and Google Grant Sagaski, there would be a <laughs> song called Sugar in the Spoon that is, uh, was posted first in, 
I don't know what how many years ago that would be. I was 13 at the time. I'm 24 now, so that would be 11 years ago. Wow. <laughs> yeah, it was. It's a very early SoundCloud post, but uh, yeah. <laughs> Oh my gosh, that's so funny. Yeah, I'm like definitely gonna have to go look that up now. I'm so yeah. curious. Um, I have my child voice just before I hit puberty, so I, I'm singing up here. Like, <laughs> that's so funny. Yeah. yeah, a couple of my friends, like um, a friend from high school, he's like in a math rock band now or something like that. Oh. He he also has some releases on SoundCloud. Um, and it's just like funny hearing, you know, the vo vocal transition, like from the beginning of Enda High School. Yeah. It's, I don't know. I love also just like artists, you know, transitions and evolutions with their music in general. Hearing that I think is pretty cool. Um, yeah. I guess kind of going off of that idea, like considering you're like kind of, you know, you're jumping around a little bit in styles, you know, in the post punk indie and then kind of 80s vibe range. Um, yeah. Do you have like a, an idea of where you want to go with new music that you make? Um, do you want to keep going with the same theme um, or like? you know, where do you see your music moving to in the future? Honestly, um, I love releasing different genre music. Um, that new new wave one, I was just like, I was listening to some Depeche Mode and I was like, you know what? Like, I really vibe with this right now. I'm really enjoying it. And so I like whipped out my keyboard and just started, you know, going on the drum pad and uh, uh, just trying to like make some melodies and like, all of a sudden this thing, I, I sang the like, um, the chorus and I did the chorus first and then I was like, this could be a real song. So <laughs> yeah, that I, I, in the future, I'm definitely going to be like releasing more of the same. Um, I really love the post-punk genre and I really Me too, love, like literally really one of my favorites. Of yeah, yeah the energy of it is just like it wakes you up it keeps you happy it like it's just a very fun embracing genre but also i'm never going to shy away from releasing probably like more 80s music more like i i really love uh spanish music and like flamenco and yes I, that was like i have i mentioned him earlier my friend josh anderson can play like uh uh really really amazing like five finger flamenco just like going to town on it and wow. uh, yeah he in like i've always just been so inspired and so um driven by that kind of music i feel like the most commercial version of that is uh santana like i feel like he's like the very commercialized version of like what really is just like a spanish guitar melody over yeah for sure music. yeah and um i so i'm never gonna shy away from that but and you know honestly i'm just excited to see where durham takes me uh because i i'm trying to reach out to people here and get together and maybe make music with them and uh i'm sure the 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 flavors of music are going to be different out here uh I, yeah, i've already definitely. gone I, i've already gone to one like tiny show that was outdoors that was like a uh like a, a gospel country band with the banjo and everything it was oh that's uh, so cool <laughs> yeah so i'm already like definitely sensing that the vibe is a little bit different here for sure so i'm excited to see where that takes me yeah i know like that sounds really cool like if you just kept doing what you're doing honestly like that would be fantastic i like what you're doing right now so i mean yeah like i Thank said post-punk is one of my favorite genres like for sure um but yeah i guess like you know just kind of taking it wherever you're feeling it maybe you know like if you're super like feeling something you know that day like you know like you were listening to depeche mode when you made that one song um yeah. is it kind of like more like you're feeling like oh i'm gonna go with the flow like i really like this genre probably stick in it but you know do kind of what you want yeah um i definitely just exactly what you just said I, like whatever genre that i'm listening to at the moment is probably what the songs i'm going to create are going to sound like you know and so yeah. like sometimes that'll be <laughs> the cleaners from venus which you should definitely <laughs> check out Other no times, i will have to <laughs> Other times that'll be a Depeche Mode. Other times that'll be like a metal band that I'm like, oh, maybe there's some classical melodies that I really enjoy. I listen to a lot of classical music. Uh, oh, yeah. So, like, I think Muse is probably the most underrated band ever in history. They released like seven albums that are all different. And one of them has a three-part symphony in it. 
Uh, Are you serious? Yeah, yeah, you should check it. It's uh, um, uh, I forget the I forget the name of the album, but it's uh, um, I've a, like I've listened to a couple of songs from Muse. I don't think I've ever listened to a full album or anything because, like, I think I heard a few songs maybe in junior high, and they've just been in my music. But I haven't yeah. done a like deep dive into their discography. But that's yeah, cool. Yeah, you should listen. You should listen to their old stuff. Their their old stuff is like, um it's so crazy different from what they release now it's uh like it's it's almost post-punk but it still has like a like a classic rock metal kind of vibe and interesting uh, yeah you you would you would love it um i would definitely recommend it uh um like dark shines is a really good song um uh um uno is a really good song that you would like that's they like go back to stuff they released before 2005 and that is like that's the the the, the nice. spot yeah yeah no i'm glad i like have a guide to use now because like honestly <laughs> i i don't know i feel like i like you know i liked i can't even remember the names of the songs but you know i liked a few songs but i think i tried to listen to some of their newer stuff um and yeah i don't know sometimes it's like hard to know where to start with certain artists so yeah, that sounds pretty cool with Muse, you want to start from the beginning. Uh, Matt Bellamy, the lead singer for Muse, actually has a wider vocal range than Haley Williams. He can Are you go serious? Higher. Yeah. In in um in uh, uh I'm gonna look it up right now. Um, <laughs> the, there's the song that he that they played in 1999, um, and it Showbiz you that should be the first song you listen to he hits higher he hits a higher note than any like singer i've ever heard singing a song it's like almost oh whistle it's almost whistle tone like it's so <laughs> incredibly high showbiz yeah, no, i'm like muse. i'm writing this down right now you said showbiz right yeah showbiz with a z yep yeah oh my gosh that's crazy like i don't know i'm just like i can't wait to hear what that sounds like um yeah sorry i guess that was a bit of a tangent but um yeah basically no it sounds like very cool that you're not trying to box yourself into a particular genre because you know i feel like sometimes artists are like you know they can like be concerned about consistency with their sound which you know is understandable but i i don't know i really admire when artists like feel that sort of freedom to jump around to different areas they want to jump around to because like why not you know yeah yeah exactly yeah that's so. super cool um i guess like looking into the future like you said that you're trying to connect with people in north carolina right now because you moved there um so do you think like going forward um are you going to try to form another band potentially, or are you, are you going to continue releasing um, music as a solo project? And if you did form a band, would that maybe stay post pedestrian? What are you thinking like future plans? Well, I definitely want to try to form another band, but it's all about like one of the reasons I even fuzzy socks even came to be was because we were all friends. Like, we never had a fight over music. It was never like we were joining a band and then there was like a lead singer who was like, I want the show. And then a guitarist is like, I'm going to quit. And like, <laughs> it was never like that. Um, yeah, it was, was like cool. literally just four friends who would hang out and maybe invite a fifth or sixth friend to come over and jam. And like, just, we would jam a lot. So we're like, why don't we jam on stage? And yeah. just, yeah. <laughs> and so like if if i can find people that i can connect to on that level and where I, at the end of the day we cannot do any music at all and we could just hang out and like enjoy each other like then maybe i'll form a band again but you know that's going to take some time searching in north carolina but if, yeah, of if, course if if i were to form another band again i don't think i think post pedestrian i'm going to keep as a single project as a as an individual and, you know, if I form another band, I can always still release music under Post Pedestrian and just uh, that that'll be my solo project that I see where it takes me. Yeah, that sounds like super cool. I think that, yeah, like honestly, since you've been releasing single music under Post Pedestrian, I feel like that kind of makes sense to keep it as kind of your own thing. Um, yeah. And yeah, as far as like regarding band members, then it sounds like it um, maybe one of the mo more important things 
um, for you is like kind of how you mesh with your other band members then would you say like you know yeah. that's maybe the, one of the more important things is like getting along with them and being like friends outside of just the band yeah and that's like the most important thing because honestly it doesn't even matter if we like the same music because like that's how you create a new genre is by you know combining a bunch of people in a room who one of them's an EDM guy, the other one's a jazz bassist, the other one's uh, like a uh, classical guitarist. And I'm like, a, I'm a metalhead, like screamo kind of dude. And uh, uh, we just kind of all sat down together and we're like, you know, I like that song you're playing. Let me try to add something to it. And like, at the end of the day, it's all about just being friends and like the music is secondary you know like great bands they they work hard but at the end of the day they're just like really good friends with each other and uh it's it's that creativity that you get when you're completely comfortable with the people around you and you have no worry in the world about like if if something problematic is going to happen or like you don't know people well enough yet and you're just like on edge all the time um it's the uh, most comfortable feeling in the world when you just have friends that you know everything's going to be okay you know everybody's going to be understanding and you know everybody's going to be welcoming yeah because honestly like making music and creating art in general i feel like is really a personal you know vulnerable process a lot of the time yeah. so yeah if you're not around people that you feel comfortable with then like you know regardless of how technically talented or good you exactly. are then it's like it might just not work um yeah, I feel like that makes a lot of sense. I've yet to join a band. I'm not quite technically talented enough <laughs> to do any of that, but yeah, it seems to me like, you know, what's what's the point of being in a band if you don't really, you know, get along with the members, you know, you don't just have fun with them because, yeah, I don't know, I feel like making music and just doing creative things in general should be like genuinely enjoyable. I don't know, like there yeah. are exceptions, of course, but yeah, that's yeah. like a really cool take. I agree with that. Yeah, exactly. Like music should be a safe space for like you to make yourself vulnerable and you to put yourself out there. And if other people like don't like your music, then that's OK. Like, but, you know, you like your music. That's the important part. And yeah, especially when I'm with good friends, then I really like the music that we make. Even yeah, if and it's, it's like a lot more songs. of a supportive environment, too, of course, when you're yeah. with friends. <laughs> Even if it's not the best song, it's fun, you know? Yeah. And that's that's the that's the important part. Yeah, no, I like definitely I agree. I hope that like I can get good enough at guitar so I can finally like start jamming with some friends and stuff. Cause yeah, I've seen jam sessions, they look so fun, and I just want to be a part of that. So that's really <laughs> cool that you know you've had some good experiences there. Yeah. Um, let's see. I think. Honestly, it, unless you have anything else to say, I think that about wraps it up. Thank you so yeah. much like for taking the time to interview with me. Yeah, of course. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. Yeah, of course. Um, anyway, yeah. And for everyone who was listening again, this is Grant Sugaski um, with Post Pedestrian. Um, interviewed by yours truly, Annika Reimers from Camp Student Radio. And yeah, thank you all for tuning in. Thank you, Grant, for uh, showing up. and. Yep, I don't I don't know how to end these, but thank you. <laughs> yep, thank you.